Hello, my name is Jen Riveros, and this video will cover the components of a cardiovascular health assessment. This is my patient, Zira, and let's begin. The cardiovascular assessment should be completed in a warm and quiet environment. Cardiac sounds are gentle in nature, therefore it is imperative that the examiner have a quiet environment to oscillate and clarify these sounds. Additionally, the presence of shivering can alter cardiac sounds. The objective data is the information that the examiner gathers through completing the physical health assessment. In order to complete the cardiovascular assessment, the appropriate equipment would include a blood pressure cuff, the stethoscope, and either hand sanitizer or a sink and water to perform hand hygiene prior to beginning. The cardiovascular assessment begins at the periphery and progresses its way in towards the core where the heart is located. For that purpose, we will begin by demonstrating how to appropriately assess a blood pressure and count a pulse rate. By assessing the pulse, the examiner is actually assessing the rate and rhythm of the heart. Each pulse felt is a pressure wave generated by the force and flare of each contraction on the arterial wall. A second hand watch is required to complete the assessment of the pulse. On the adult patient, the radial artery is typically used to assess and count the pulse. The radial artery is located below the thumb and along the distance of the radial bone. To find this location, palpate or feel with the three pads of your fingers. Once you find the artery, count using your watch for 30 seconds. In the event that the pulse feels abnormal, such as a thready pulse with an irregular heart rhythm, you would count the pulse for a full minute. After assessing the pulse, we would move into taking a blood pressure measure. In order to measure the blood pressure, we need to use both the stethoscope and the blood pressure cuff. The blood pressure is a measure of the force of blood against our vessel walls. The blood pressure should be assessed after the patient has had at least five minutes to ease into the assessment environment. A general rule is that valid blood pressures result from comfort and relaxation. As you can see, Zira is sitting, but the patient can also be lying down. Regardless of a sitting or supine position, the patient's arm should be comfortably resting at the level of their heart. If assessing your patient's blood pressure with your patient in the seated position, make sure that their legs are uncrossed. Crossed legs can cause false blood pressure readings. Prior to placing the blood pressure cuff, palpate the brachial artery, which is located medial to the biceps muscle. Once you find the location of this artery, place your blood pressure cuff approximately two and a half centimeters above its location. With your blood pressure cuff in place, continue to palpate the brachial pulse. While palpating, start applying pressure to the cuff until you can no longer feel the brachial pulsation. Note the number on the cuff when the absence of this pulsation occurs. At this point, rapidly and completely deflate your cuff. Allow approximately 15 to 20 seconds for your patient's arm to reperfuse. After this time frame, apply pressure, but this time exceed the pressure by 20 to 30 millimeters beyond that point where the pulse was no longer felt. Prior to reinflating the cuff the second time, clean your stethoscope with an alcohol pad for a sepsis. Once your stethoscope is clean, place it in the location over the brachial artery. At this point, with your stethoscope securely in place on the patient's skin, you are ready to reinflate the pressure to the desired range for your patient.
Once you reach the maximum range for your patient, slowly and completely deflate the cuff. The first beat that you hear upon oscillation will re represent the systolic blood pressure. The number at which this beat disappears will represent your diastolic blood pressure. In continuing with the peripheral assessment, it is time to inspect and palpate the upper and lower extremities of the patient. During this assessment, we are looking for even skin tones throughout the extremities and even temperature as we progress down the length of the extremities. Alterations in skin color or uneven skin temperature can represent a problem with peripheral perfusion. When assessing the skin temperature, move down both extremities on each side with the dorsal side of your hand. A normal skin assessment would show skin that was dry, clean, and intact. However, in the presence of arterial or venous insufficiencies, patients can have wounds and alterations in their skin integrity. In the presence of a skin lesion or wound, it is appropriate to document the exact location of the wound and its dimensions measured in millimeters, and the characteristics of edges, smell, or drainage. While assessing the upper and lower extremities, we want to complete our assessment of the peripheral pulses. As previously demonstrated, we showed you how to assess the radial pulse. At this point, you want to be sure to assess the radial pulse on both arms and compare the findings. As you move down to the lower extremities, you want to check for lower perfusion by assessing the posterior tibial pulse which is located on the medial root of the inner ankle. After assessing the posterior tibial pulse, you move down to the pedal pulse, which is located lateral and parallel to the great toe. If these two pulses are intact and at good rate and rhythm, you can assume adequate perfusion of the lower extremities. In the event that there was coolness or non palpable pulses in the feet, you would want to work your way back up to assess the pulses behind the knee and within the groove. The pulse within the groove of the hip is the femoral pulse. The femoral pulse and the popliteal pulse are more difficult for the beginning examiner to palpate. During your assessment of the peripheral pulses, it is a good time to assess the capillary refill. The capillary refill can be assessed in the nail beds of the hands or toes, and it is a measurement of the strength of your cardiac output to perfuse the limbs. To assess the capillary refill, apply firm pressure to the nail bed. It's a little uncomfortable and it causes blanching of the nail bed but upon release of your pressure, there should be an almost immediate return of pink flow to the nail bed.